Guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're anything like me, you enjoy getting out on the bike with a bunch of mates, riding downtown to the local coffee shop, ordering a bit of cake and a nice warm coffee and talking absolute smack. But sometimes it's kind of nice to get out and ride alone. It may be that you genuinely need some downtime alone. You might be busy at work and just need to escape the chatter or perhaps you got some intervals to do or your mates are busy. In this week's video I'm going to share with you my top five tips for cycling on your own. So tip number one, make sure you plan a route. By spending a bit of time at home pre-ride, planning where you're gonna go, what you're gonna see, and where you're gonna refuel, you can leave the house knowing exactly what you're in for. You can plan how much food and water you need to take before you're gonna be able to resupply. You can work out if that little coffee shop you're planning to stop at is actually gonna be open, and you can let a loved one know where you're actually going. By planning a route, before you leave the house, you remove a lot of the unknowns, and for some people, this is the most daunting part of a solo ride. This leads us nicely into tip number two, making sure you eat enough before you leave the house. We've all been there. We leave the house bright and early, ready to get stuck into a long day on the pedals. But an hour in, we're just feeling kind of flat. Perhaps the banana you ate as you rushed out the door wasn't quite enough. Perhaps you didn't even eat the banana. You just smashed a quick cup of coffee and hit the pedals. If there's one bit of advice I can give you as a professional athlete, it's that who is your friend? Be it an easy recovery ride or a long endurance ride. Breakfast is the most important piece of the puzzle as far as your energy levels are gonna go. I eat at least three bits of toast with avocado and cottage cheese before I'm at the door. And if the ride is longer, I'll add in oats with nuts and yogurt and a piece of fruit. When the energy levels drop and you find yourself reaching into that rear pocket just to fill the hunger void, you're in for a long, lonely day on the bike. So remember, eat up big before you leave home. It's gonna fuel the ride ahead and you'll perform much better because of it. Number three, on the topic of food, carrying enough food and drink. Now, while we're on the topic of eating, let's chat about ride food and drink. Are you eating enough to sustain yourself? Or are you falling into a calorie deficit? Research shows that you should be eating and drinking every 30 minutes on the bike, just to ensure your body remains energized. Now, I know stuffing your pockets with food can sometimes feel kind of cumbersome, and I know that a lot of you probably trying to lose a bit of weight, but starving yourself while on the bike is not the way to do it. Getting two or three hours into a five hour loop and realizing you're about to bonk, no food left to eat, is a horrible situation to find yourself in. And I've been there many times before. Even worse, if you haven't planned your route properly, and you find that coffee shop you were relying on to refuel is closed, you'll wish you'd thrown a couple of extra muesli bars the rear pocket. Ride nutrition doesn't have to be expensive. It's amazing how far a few muesli bars, some dates, and a few bananas will get you. And let's face it, when you can't raid your mate's pockets for food, you want a stash of food in your own pockets to ensure you get home safely and without having to rely on the gas station two kilometers from home. Number four, music and podcasts are your friends, if done safely. I often cop flack for listening to music and potties while I ride. Some argue that it distracts you from traffic on the roads, but I find that when done right, I'm actually more alert as to what's going on around me and more motivated to keep on pushing and get to the top of that next climb or along the path into the headwind time. First things first, one headphone, not two. Unless I'm on a bike path, I'll only use one headphone, the one that sits on the curb side. For those of us in Europe and the US, it's the right one. For those in Australia and the UK, it's the left. Music for me, when paired with the bike, is like meditation. My mind goes into a really nice place, I connect with the environment around me, and I find I actually become really creative. When riding alone, especially for a long time, 
can get kind of monotonous, especially if there's a strong headwind or a long stretch of the road. And this is where music and or a podcast become your friend. Pop in a headphone and enjoy that extra motivation and creativity. And finally, number five, tell somebody where you're going. A lot of the GPS devices now allow you to share your location with someone. Lots of you live in a city where perhaps it's a little less important, but for those that live more remote, this is super important, especially when you're riding off road. Share your location or at least your ride plans with someone so that if the worst happens and you end up coming off the bike for whatever reason, or you find yourself with an irreparable mechanical, it's easy to locate you. A couple of years ago, I had a nasty little off on the gravel in a remote part of Spain with no phone reception. I hadn't told anyone where I was going and found myself in a really compromised position trying to seek help. Now, I was fortunate enough that there were passers-by and they were able to help me. But failing this, I would have been in a bit of a pickle, stranded and with no one to come and help me. And there's actually one more. Tip number six, a bonus one, make sure you take spares with you. Your mates aren't there, there's no spare gas canisters, or tubes, or hand pumps. If you find yourself with a slashed tire or a broken chain, make sure you've got the means to fix it. There's nothing quite like having a phone and make all your folks come and get you. Worse still, having to pay for a taxi fare. I've been there, the call of shame. Don't do it. So there you go, guys. There's my six essential tips for riding on your own to make sure you get home safely and in a position to upload your ride to Strava. Because as the old saying goes, if it isn't on Strava, it didn't exist. If this was helpful, like, share, comment below. Let me know your tips for riding alone and I look forward to seeing you again soon.